Good morning, Anarchy Land. This is Tracy, and we are going to chat real quick about the... I'm going to start a new series in July. We're going to look at the people responsible for the situation in Ukraine and in China, between China and Taiwan. We're going to look at the not just the situations themselves, but the people behind it, the owners of the banks, the owners of these big defense contract companies, and all these individuals, we're going to look squarely at them and at their responsibility in all of these situations. Um, I'm going to leave you a link to an audio book that was read out loud on YouTube called War is a racket by General Smidley D. Butler. You want to say he served in World War One and Two. So this is somebody who would actually know what he's talking about. Plus, there's some articles I'm going to leave you. I hope you will read. Because let me tell you, they're pretty fascinating. Um, there's an interview with Scott Ritter that he did. There's an article. I think I shared this article with y'all last week. Ribbon, why it's unfreedom 50 years later about how this gentleman left Soviet Union because of the suppression of speech and what he's seeing now. I'm going to go ahead and leave that again for you. Because I'm also going to leave you another article. A Petri Dish for Fascism. How Ukraine has become a magnet for Western neo-Nazis. That is not a joke. Alright, now. We're going, like I said, in this series, coming in July, we're going to look at all these oligarchs that own these companies that are pushing all this garbage. Now, through the rest of June, uh, my daughter has a math boot camp four days a week. Plus, well, she's got work. I have my responsibilities. So, videos are going to be kind of hit or miss. I am going to finish, though, New Confessions of an Economic Hitman before I start this one, which means I've got to get reading this book. i got to finish this book. Yeah. Thank you, ADHD and dyslexia. <laughs> But something I want you guys to think about is with this situation with the dam in Ukraine, who had the most to gain by it? Who had the most to lose? When you think about the who, what, where, when, why, and how of that situation, it should become clear who was behind you. Now, space aliens. I can't believe I'm actually going to talk about this, but I am, so here we go. Um, first of all, I have no, a hard enough time getting along with the average run of the Joe asshole. And now I'm being told that I might have to figure out how to get along with another group. No, thank you. I'll pass. Thank you very much. Now, I've said this before. I don't know if space aliens exist. I've never seen them. Would I be surprised if they do? Not at least. Would I be shocked if they don't? Not at all. Now, let's presume they do exist. I can guarantee you they will never take an American back as proof of intelligent life. That's pretty much a given. If you look around this country and actually try to have a conversation with somebody in this country that was born and raised here, would they take an American back to study how stupid works? Definitely. Without a doubt. Alright. Do they exist, don't they? I'm more worried about my economic situation, as are most people. 
I'll see you guys later.